Today's painting is going to be a comparison between two very distinct styles. I hope you'll check it out. This is inspired by my recent launch of my Domestica course. And here is a brief, super quick mini trailer of that here before we get to the painting. Hey everyone, today we're going to look at a really quick tutorial of kind of a compare and contrast, how we might draw an eye if we're focusing on line work, um, a way of working that's sort of like sketching based. This is really a drawing based approach that says, I would like to find out, you know, the shape of everything. I'd like to draw those shapes in. I'd like to get a really good feeling for my drawing. And then after I do that, I'm going to carefully go in and put my values in and kind of in a way, I'm creating um, my own sort of, um, you know, like a, like a coloring book of sorts. Like here, I'm going to sketch everything out and I'm going to put everything where it goes. And there's a lot of goodness in that. that. That style of drawing is very good. And you can be as careful of a drawer, a draftsman and a technical artist as, as you want to be. And a lot of artists that I know that are really, really good are very, very good at this. and. This is just a very quick example of that approach and there is absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's a great strategy and you can get very, very good outcomes. Here I'm using a very smooth set of brushes. These are the Photoshop default brushes just to say, hey, if I'm going to draw an eye, I'm going to draw the upper lid and the shadow that's coming from it. And I draw kind of the shadow that's that's from the eyelid onto the uh, iris itself and, and the pupil and um, and then I'm going to make sure that the white of the eye isn't pure white. Of course, it almost never is. And I'm going to sample for the two separate sides of the, the, the eye and, and color that in. And it's going to look, you know, it's going to start to look really, really nice. And I can very carefully and strategically um, work my way around and find all the values and find all the shapes and make sure that I'm following the lines that I put down. And I can get a good drawing here. This is. A really good simple way to work it just it's focused on getting good clean edges it's focused on on soft you know uh, blending with opacity and just you know finding your darks coloring things in taking it a step at a time and this is often kind of the way that we might approach drawing and painting digitally or drawing and painting traditionally um, and there is nothing wrong with it it's a great strategy and I think all of us use that strategy to some degree and you can see that here when you remove the line work you know you have a really nice um, you have a really nice value based drawing that you could refine and build up and add texture and detail to and that way of working would look great and you could get great outcomes and you would be in good company drawing in that style it's a very good way to work a lot of digital artists work that way and you can see why you know here it is um, the outcome but uh, in the class that I'm doing with Domestica, the focus is on something very, very different. So um, I'm going to do a kind of a dramatic no line approach. Um, you can mix and match these two approaches at will. You don't have to go kind of all in with no line work and be crazy like I am. But for someone like me, I really enjoy the challenge of not using any line and just kind of trying to find the negative space that sits between my dark values and kind of build the image um, in a very kind of brazen, bold and kind of crazy way. But um, I do think that that I just wanted to show you with this technique that there is a huge spectrum of how you might approach a subject. Um, I still use a lot of line work for my first step. I will kind of sketch in the basic arrangement of all the shapes in my drawing whether it's a portrait or a landscape or a still life you know whatever it is um, whether i'm doing science fiction illustration or or whatever I do some sketching i kind of figure out where everything's going to go but i do like to keep that sort of m minimal um, as you can see in this drawing or in this painting in this technique that i'm doing on the right i'm doing no line i'm letting everything come from bigger bolder brush strokes and so Every single edge is made from the contact or collision between 
one value and another, one brush stroke and another. And there's no linear element to define that. It's all based on the shapes of the actual brush strokes. And you know, with digital, it's cool because you could, you know, you can hide your your line work. You can put it all in a separate layer and then just paint all bold and crazy underneath it, and still have that security blanket of knowing you're putting things in the right place. Um, but this, what I'm doing here, is kind of like a, um, you know, very. It's out beyond the guardrails. It's just kind of painting with no, no safety net, and and that's, you know, it, it's useful as a tutorial because I just wanted to show how to break down something that's like as complicated as an eye where you have a light source that's creating um, highlights, midtones, shadows, um, the sphere or ball of the eye is illuminated in a very direct way and there's shadows and cast shadows and highlights and um, re reflected lights and there's all kinds of things happening even just on the wet part of the eyeball um, never mind the you know the triangular uh, volumes of the lashes or the thickness of the eyelids that are laying on top of the eyeball and all of the things that are going on there. So I'm but what I'm trying to do here is I'm just showing how one can approach the eye in two very different ways and um, not that this is a binary solution not that it's one or the other but that there is a spectrum and here I am maybe showing things in a very exaggerated way but that you can use either of these strategies, you know, into whatever effect you you want, and you will be in good company with great artists from present and past who do both of these things or somewhere in the middle. Um, but I did think it was nice to be able to show a little bit of the variation and variety that you can get between the two strategies. Um, the one is much more focused on line and careful edges. The other one is much more focused on brush strokes and what you get there is a much more organic edge um, and it's definitely chunkier and messier and so on and but you can see here you know they both look nice um, the first solution is, is more refined at this point so I'm gonna go ahead and give this next uh, strategy the more chunky solution a little bit more attention so that I can you know make it look a little bit more finished as well Like I said, using these strategies, um, you're not gonna. It's not an issue of right or wrong. It's just an issue of what you want. You know, in in one case, you're focusing on line and you're focusing on um, creating careful transitions between those values. In the other one, you're you're painting the light with really chunky brush strokes. And so, here's what I'm doing too: is a lot of times when I'll paint um, digitally or traditionally, I'll have gaps between my brush strokes. And so what I'll do here in the digital version is like I'll go into my under layer and I'll use a really bold, messy brush to just mask in big chunks of, of what's going on underneath. And I can use that to fill those gaps, but I can use it also to accentuate the, 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 or, or add a little drama to the messiness of what I'm doing. Um, and here, you know, you can start to see the mature version of of what is more my kind of standard style of painting there on the right and um, I think that it is just a, a worthwhile comparison because it's it's easy to see when you see them side by side you know a lot of um, a lot of times when you when you think about different ways of approaching something uh, it's it's intellectual but when you see it actually the physical thing uh, side by side and the outcomes side by side you get to have a nice feeling for what, kind of what you want um, and with digital you can kind of trick yourself or, or trick the the you know the audience in the sense that you could have your line work on a, on a separate layer like I said and still paint really chunky and messy like I do on the right side but then just you know at the end of the painting you could just delete that layer with your line work so you could kind of um, be bold and crazy uh, within the constraints and safety of having those lines there so you can kind of know what's gonna what it's gonna look like um, but really I think like uh, what you see on the left side is is it's a painting with lines it's it's finding the values after you get the line work done and then really it's it's a focus on drawing you know you're, there's a very big focus on the drawing like the individual hairs of the eyelashes the individual hairs of the 
um, eyebrows. But then on the right side you have, it's really a focus on painting the shapes through painting the light. And it's one of my strategies for painting more loosely is painting light, not features, painting value, not things. So, and I think that's more of a focus on painting. So one's more focused on drawing, one's more focused on painting. So that's that. I hope that was fun and I hope that you um, maybe learned something. Thanks so much for checking it out and take care.